When you're drinking a frozen beverage from McDonald's, your brain may not like how refreshingly cold it is, but the rest of your body, oh yes, it's going to relish every moment of it because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Get all the chill you need for just $1.69 from any size frozen drink like a frozen Fanta Blue Raspberry to a new ice cold lemonade. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello, 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 and welcome to Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network powered by Raven International. I'm your host, Debbie Specter Weissman, the Dream Coach. This is a show where we talk about dreams both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love. Mm. You know, I can't believe this year is more than half over. I know all of us wish this year hadn't even happened at all. I mean, it's hard to live your dream life when you're turned upside down and sideways and have had your daily routines disrupted. And that's for us lucky ones who've managed to avoid contracting the virus or suffered devastating financial losses as a result of the economic downturn. It's enough to make you want to keep under the covers and hide until it all goes away. But as you regular listeners know, there is another way to go. In truth, we have powers and resources within ourselves that we may not know we have or may have forgotten when dealing with the new daily realities we face. As a result, there are positive lessons we can learn from these challenging times. And we're going to discuss them with my special guest, Alana Pratt. Alana is an internationally known intimacy and relationship expert and the author of six books, including her new one with the provocative title, Finding the One is Bull. Becoming the one is brilliant and beautiful. And maybe we'll get into that in a little while. <laughs> Welcome to Dream Power Radio, Alana. Oh, Debbie, it's so good to see you again. And what a pleasure and honor it is to be here. And I should probably ask you before we begin. So no swearing on this podcast, yes? <laughs> no, no swearing. We kind of like to keep it clean. PG, but, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so yes, BS, not the other word. Yeah, exactly. It's great to see you. Exactly. It is great to see you too. And I'm so excited to be talking about you about this with you Mm. (laughs) because Alana the virus is out there and creating havoc wherever we go and look as individuals we can't do anything about it I mean I don't know about you I'm not a doctor I don't have a cure I don't have any special treatments I don't have any special advice for how to avoid it or anything except for doing what they all tell us to do, like wear masks and keep good hygiene and keep our social distance and all of those things that we all should be doing. So I can't cure it. But what I can do and what we all can do is change how we cope with it. Mm. So we're not living in fear. In effect, if we're living in fear, we're not living much at all. So we have to find better ways to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. So. I know you've come up with some lessons for us, a formula for navigating through this storm, including practices we can carry with us in our post-pandemic lives as well. So I know one of the things that you stress is the concept of control or the lack of it. Uh, Can you talk about that? Yeah, isn't it funny? I was on Jenny McCarthy's show and we were talking about how she's like, it's, everybody says it's so uncertain right now. And I'm like, when has it not been uncertain, this life? And a lot of the work I do with intimacy and dating is people want to control the chance of being rejected whether they are online dating, whether they're on a date, whether they're, you know, in the bedroom, or even whether they've been in a relationship for 20 years, none of us enjoy rejection. 
And because we can't control as much as we want the other person, and now with COVID, we certainly know that we can't control life. What do we do? Well, you can freak out and react, um, become even more of a control freak, hide under the covers, decide, you know, I'm not going to date anymore or, or I'm not going to talk to my partner anymore. But of course, that's not going to work. So the other solution is, okay, if I'm going to respond, not react, given I am not able to control things and life is un- inherently uncertain, where am I going to find safety? The old model was looking for safety in our bank account in the size of our butt. Look, see how sexy I am. I have a small butt or what? maybe a big butt, <laughs> whatever. Or I can, I can look for my worth in my achievements and accomplishments, all of that safety and security outside in. And that's what makes us spin and grasp and hold on to and try to control. That's officially bankrupt. COVID has been a beautiful lesson in that. So what if we started looking for safety and security where we can have it and I guess we could even use the word where we can control it, maybe, a, maybe cultivate it is a better word, which is on the inside. And so I, as an intimacy expert, needed to learn what I teach because I was just like most of humanity seeking on the outside for my safety and approval. And I started to cultivate a relationship on the inside with, I call her little Alana. There's probably 15 or 20 of her <laughs> on the inside. All these little parts that are afraid, ashamed, scared, uh, sad, mad, uh, don't know how to be with the uncertainty. And it feels like an emotion. It feels like anxiety. It feels like overwhelm. It, it feels like even if depression, you know, the, the hey, we got to do something about this. But if you shove it down, that potency, that anchor, if you shove it down, it feels like depression. So all these emotions on the inside, I don't know about you, Debbie, but I wasn't taught growing up how to navigate intense emotions It's just like, stop crying and put a happy face on and get a move on, like squish it. And so I've learned over time how to welcome, go towards little Alana, give her a hug, validate her, acknowledge her. Hey, breathe. You have every right to feel this way. This is an uncertain time. And and through visualization, through breath, through quantum science, all the processes, when we go on the inside we can actually start to cultivate safety on the inside. I might not know what's going to happen on the outside, but I will have my own back. I may not have security in my bank account, but I have security within, with the divine, with God, with my resilience, with my intuition, with my creative capacity, with my infinite possibilities that I can tap into when I'm calm and harmonious and coherent in my heart. So that's this inner cultivation of safety and security which allows us to keep our eyes wide open in a very uncertain world and be present, make wise choices for ourselves that align with our truth, be compassionate to others, have patience, focus on gratitude. There's a lot of capacities that happen when we can be with uncertainty and even after you practice, begin to dance with the mystery. So it doesn't need to be a scary thing every day. You can say, okay, I choose such and such. What do you think, universe? And you can begin to have this co-creative dance with the mystery. And sooner than later, the universe starts to respawn back because you're choosing to respond. It's a higher vibration than reacting. The universe then mirrors back your higher vibration of responding with serendipity, uh, miracles. You get an email from somebody. Uh, things go more flowingly with the bank account, etc. Everything's a reflection of what's going on on the inside. The inside always creates the outside. So that is a long-winded answer of what we can do <laughs> to let go of control, important significance, find safety, security on the inside with our little you, and actually become stronger and uh, more grateful because of COVID. Yeah, and, but doesn't it also boil down to loving yourself, loving that little you that you're getting in contact with? Well said, Deb, of course. Like, it's really easy to love our triumphant, got it together, looks so good part, right? But it's more difficult to love that scared, ashamed, afraid, mad, uh, uncertain part. So yes, when we go in and we do this work with little you to make them feel safe, to make that part of you feel secure, 
you've got to learn to unconditionally love that part, which means love without condition, which means if you're sad, I love you. If you're happy, I love you. If you're scared, I love you. If you're triumphant, I love you. Like no matter what, I love you and I got you, which doesn't mean we have to like it. It's more of a state. I like the word allowance. Like you're not going to resist that part of you. You're not going to say change. You better change for me to love you. You're going to say, I love you as you are. I allow the way you are. I may not prefer that you're having a freak out right now. I may not prefer that you want to stay in bed and eat another bag of chips right now. I may not prefer that you just yelled at the kids, but hi, you're doing your best. I'm here. I love you. I got you. You have every right to feel this way. I acknowledge you. Compassion, empathy for self turns into love, turns into unconditional love, brings us back to center, presence, grace, where we can choose again with our highest prefrontal cortex, our highest creativity, our highest abstract thinking, and our instincts, intuition. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Yeah, this is my way. This is my path. This is my truth. And then we clean up our mess. If we made a mess, (laughs) we make up for the damage done if we need to apologize. And we begin again. We forgive yeah, ourselves. We forgive others. We move on. Right. And the other thing about loving ourselves is when we make messes, because we're all human, as yeah. we are all going to make messes, yes. uh, we give ourselves permission to apologize, make amends, whatever, and, and move on. Right. Well, guilt is self-punishment. So there we are. We notice we did something that wasn't our optimal choice. We have two choices to bash ourselves over the head with a two by four, shove little you in the closet and make everything worse or go, Hey, you were terrified. You weren't in your heart. You did your best. I get it. Come here, you and give that part of you a hug and forgive that part of you with compassion and empathy. Bring that part home with, with allowance And then as one, you and little you together, we can look now together out at the world with a new point of view. And I like the word forgive, right? But in the word, in the sentence, thank you for giving me. Thank you. And the word forgive is in there. Thank you for giving me this experience of COVID, of the bank account doing this, of hanging out with my partner every single day for months and months. Like, thank you for giving me this experience because it's taught me, ah, patience allowance, speaking up, letting go, you know, creating a new reality, pivoting with my business, surrendering and seeing what the universe has in store for me, listening, meditating more. Thank you. There's a lesson in here for us. If we can say thank you and we can forgive and be ready to receive what's wanting to emerge from within us. Oh, yes. Well, well, well spoken. And and talking about thanking and forgiveness brings to me uh, the point of gratitude. Yes. And I want to say that, and I've talked about this before, but I'll say it again because I think it's important to, to say. Yeah. Uh, it has been my go to uh. feeling for getting through these past few months. Because, look, you know, I'm human, like I said, human, and there are days when I'm thinking, oh my God, how can I get through this? This is, this is never going to end. And, you know, what's going to happen to us and yes. how more shoes are going to drop and what, you know, the, the whole woe is me thing yeah. going oh, crazy yeah. because, you know, yes. but I then turn around and I remind myself of how incredibly lucky I am. Yeah. Uh, I have my health. Yes. I am fortunate to be in a beautiful place and I give thanks to that every day and that helps keep me sane. <laughs> Mm, that's so, so beautiful. So how do, beautiful. How do you define gratitude and how can people find their way to gratitude when they're focused on what's not working in their world? Yeah. Well, the first way I like the uh, heart math. I like when my intuition is proven with science. So I've been hanging out with the heart math, wonderful people, and I've got my little inner balance so I can check my coherence level in my heart. And what science feedback is telling me is when I slow my breath down in my heart and I'm grateful for, I literally have a beating heart right now. Like, let's just start with that. Okay. So I breathe through my heart and I'm grateful for my heart. The number goes up a little bit, up in harmony, up in love. They can measure this coherence. Then I start to be grateful for things that are easy. 
uh, like reconnecting with you, Debbie. I could be grateful for that. I could be grateful that there's money in the bank. There's food in the fridge. There's a roof over my head that I have life that my loved ones are alive. I can have great. So have gratitude for the easy stuff first. And then, and I notice the number goes up and then here becomes the next level of practice. Can we be appreciative for and grateful for the challenges and still keep our heart open? And so this becomes our new muscle in the gratitude practice because the thank you for giving me this challenge. I am grateful for this challenge. I am appreciative for this challenge because I've learned and then you fill in the blank. Compassion for myself. I've learned to forgive myself. I've learned to be a little more patient with others. I've learned that Life doesn't go according to plan, and it could be even better than I ever imagined. If I let go of control, let go of expectations, let go of a timeline that I think is the way to do it, right? So we can start to get grateful for obstacles. We can start to get appreciative for challenges, and then, and even for pain. We can even be grateful for the gifts of pain. It builds resilience, fortitude, grit, strength. Right? So as we, and then I measure all of this with the inner balance. And as I start, it it wobbles a bit as I bring up something that is challenging. But if I keep my heart open and I focus on feeling, not thinking, feeling appreciation for, it's almost like a humility, like a humble kind of like, like, thank you that I fell down because I learned how to get back up. Thank you that I messed that up because I learned how to clean it up. Thank you that I had no idea what to do, but I prayed and I journaled and I meditated and I went for a walk in nature and I got an inspiration. Thank you that I pivoted my business and I didn't know what was going to happen and I had to go on blind faith, but I'm learning to trust my heart. You see, if you can be grateful for all the challenges as well, then the number goes up even higher and you feel this gratitude. And the feedback loop is showing you that, again, gratitude is helping literally your immune system your body run better, everything is healthier inside your body as you're being measured in this gratitude and appreciation. And then here's the last piece that really made the number go higher. I'm still a kind of driven lady. I like results. I like to win. I got to admit. Um, And what happened was when I got attached, I made it important, a little too significant that things would go a certain way, even as I was feeling appreciation, even as I was visioning the best possible outcome, even as I was being grateful for X, Y, and Z, if I was attached, if I made that very significant that it turned out my way, according to my timeline with my expectations, the number kind of hovered. But when I just said, oh, I'm just going to let this go or better. I surrender. I let it go. This or better. I let go of all importance. I lower all significance. You know, this is the best I got universe. (sighs) Have at it. Have at it with me. Like a, like a dance. The number went, it skyrocketed even higher. And so it's a practice. This gratitude is literally a measurable practice. First again, to remember, breathe through your heart, grateful for your body, feel, not just think you can't think gratitude. You have to feel it. So feel it, feel it for the easy stuff first. Then start to keep the heart open, feeling it for the challenges. And then the last step, let go of attachment of how it's all going to work out. Make room for it to be different or even better. This is the path that COVID is a gift to train us in. Mm, Wonderful lessons we're getting. Uh, We have to take a little break now. Uh, We are speaking with intimacy and relationship expert Alana Pratt about lessons from the coronavirus. And we'll be right back. Join me, my fellow Raven International podcasters, and broadcasters from around the world in a joyous salute to the heroes of the pandemic. On July 24th, the Raven International Network is devoting the entire day to a star-studded list of speakers who will inspire, empower, and connect with you. Watch on the Raven International Network channel on Roku or Amazon Fire or listen on podcasts everywhere. See you on the 24th. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Spector-Weissman. Yes, and welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, Debbie Spector-Weissman, and we're speaking with relationship expert, Elana Pratt, about lessons we can learn from the coronavirus. 
Uh, Alana, you talked about this a bit, which seemed a bit counterintuitive to me, and that was the whole idea about feeling. Because it seems that you know, we need to feel. It seems to me, well, if you're, you're freaked out about what's going on, how does feeling help us, especially if what we're feeling is negative? Mm, this is so great, and it is counterintuitive, but here's what science tells us. What we resist persists and over time grows. And in the, since the last time we had the pleasure of being together with Kelly Sullivan Walden, our dear friend, I have had yet another certification. I'm always a student and a teacher. And so the latest certifications that I've been trained in explain that for the brain to fully integrate a trigger or a trauma or an emotional charge, we need to be able to integrate the image, the thought, the emotion, and the body sensation. So just sitting on the couch talking about it isn't going to do it. Just visualizing our vision board alone is not going to do it. Just having one good cry and one good freak out, we all know it comes back again. Or even some of the tapping and wonderful somatic work that's out there is relief or heading us in the right direction. But I'm interested in lasting change, full integration, a new set point, a new normal, like a new baseline. And this is what I've learned when all four elements are integrated, we cannot create energy or destroy energy. We can only change it. We can only shift it like wizards. So let's say we have the freak out energy. What you resist persists if you try to push it away and, I don't know, have another pizza or buy a 17th handbag or a third glass of wine. Isn't it interesting how that same issue is there the next morning, right? And now you've got a a hangover or a big credit card bill or something. So we all know when we freak out, if we resist it and push it down, we don't get better. And often we get depressed. And then all of the medications or the eating problems or, or the addictions begin to arise. And it's all because none of us have been taught, I wasn't either, how to integrate an emotion from a lower state to a higher state, do the wizardry. And so what I've been trained in is you actually feel that which you've been resisting for a very short period of time, noticing the image, thinking the thought, feeling the emotion, letting every body sensation be there for a short period of time, taken through a process will allow it to integrate into the next level. So maybe freak out is the first thing someone would feel. Then the next level might be, maybe there was some anger around that. They would feel the anger. Then the next level might be, actually, that really made me feel sad underneath it all. Then they'd feel the sadness. And then maybe the next thing would be, oh, that makes me hopeless. They'd feel the hopeless. Now, right there, that's so much caca. Most people won't even feel the first one and go straight for the glass of wine. But if you're willing to be held in these processes by me or one of my certified coaches and and we got you and you keep feeling the emotions fully for short periods of time, all four elements every single time, all of a sudden you get to, oh, acceptance. Oh, the next one is calm. Oh, the next one is stillness, absolute stillness. And then the next one is Oh, inspiration. I have an idea. I see something I never saw before. Because you literally have aligned your brain, your body, the coherence in your heart with the field around you, with your own intuition and the best part of your brain. And all of a sudden, your wisdom itself, awareness itself. And, and then you start to cultivate courage itself. Strength is just hitting your head against the wall again. Anybody can do that. It's just like willpower. It's just pushing. But true courage True bravery comes from a cultivation, integration, processing of all of that freak out into the capacity to keep your heart open and bravery in the face of anything, staying connected that you know what you know. Pre-thought, you know first, you think second. So you know what you know and you can trust yourself. Even though you can't control the universe, you can have a sense of knowing and trust in yourself as you move forward. It kind of reminds me of like, did you see the Wonder Woman movie where she's like, oh no, we're, go- we're, we're going to go save everybody. And out she goes into the front line, you know, through the whole thing. And I'm crying in the movie because she knew what she knew. And she was leading with the highest vibration of love. And of course she was strong and she had all her shield and all of her bells and whistles and the rest of it. But that's sort of like a symbolic movie version of what it's like to feel the worst of those feelings, get them all the way home into grace and stillness hear the truth emerge from within you 
so that you trust you. And then you put one foot in front of the other. And remember that last little part. And then you let go of the outcome. So you're not attached. And I swear life becomes miraculous, even in the face of COVID. Yeah, that, that attachment part is the part I think a lot of people get stuck on. It's, it's very easy to stay attached. I know. I know. I do too. I have a morning practice and an evening practice. And if I don't do it, I'm a hot mess. I have three coaches and probably 40 or 50 clients. But if I don't have my three coaches, I don't do a good job with my clients. Like I'm a student too. I'm no better than anyone else, but I've decided that deeper roots create higher shoots. I I require structure in order to be my best self. I think it's a sign of strength and wisdom to request support and to have structures in our life. And uh, I don't think there'll be a day on the planet where I'm not coached because I can't see my blind spots. I can see others, but I can't see mine to save my life. No, I think that's very true. It's true for probably everybody, if they would admit it. It's true for everybody. So let's say somebody is feeling... They're feeling the wrong things. They, they want to feel the right things. Um, how long does it take? Because I'm practical. I want to know the answers. They say. Sure, sure, Deb. Oh. Tell me, yeah. <laughs> how long does it take to, to transform yourself from, from going to those negative feelings to training yourself to being more positive? Yeah. So one thing I want to say about your question, and then I'll give you examples of me and my clients. I don't believe there are good feelings and bad feelings. I don't feel there are right feelings and wrong feelings. Just that point of view creates judgment and stuckness and doesn't allow the gift of, as I said before, there's actually benefits of pain and actually detriments of too much support. Let's really look at that for a second. Like, okay, so we don't like pain or we don't like freaking out. What? But but there's a benefit there. There's a benefit to it's building resilience. It's building grit. It's building compassion. It's an indicator that something's off. There's, there's actually a benefit to pain. And if we go over into pleasure, let's say too much pleasure, you forget to pick up the kids. <laughs> you forget to pay the taxes. You eat bonbons every day and now you're 500 pounds. Like, you know, there's actually detriments to too much pleasure or support. And there's actually benefits to pain, struggle, obstacles. And it allows us to be in reality, balanced, really clear, not clamoring for the good and resisting the bad and having this roller coaster of life. Like, no, we're going to put on our big girl panties or boxer shorts or whatever. We're going to squarely look at life that everything is for us and nothing is against us. Just the new point of view that it's not wrong or bad changes everything. It moves us into allowance, moves us out of resistance into allowance. Allowance doesn't mean you like it, Allowance doesn't mean you even prefer it. It just means you will not waste any of your life force energy pushing away something that you can't control that by pushing it away, it's going to even make it worse. So just that point of view allows you to have this care, this kindness as you move towards this aspect of self, this emotion that's really intense. Okay. We're not going to go towards it and try to kill it. It's not going to work. We're like, Hey, baby girl. Hey, sweet little guy, come here. You're scared. It's a very different point of view than bad and wrong. Need to change you now because you're messing up my life, (laughs) right? Which is how I did most of my life. So that would be like step one. So when you have this different point of view, when you go towards difficulty with an allowance or a welcoming, if you can feel the sense of being wholeness itself, all that is, all that is would include all, which would be light and dark. So if you practice being all that is going towards that difficulty very quickly through zero resistance, it will uh, transform. So within, I mean, I do group coaching sessions where people are triggered, I don't know, 10 or 15 people on the call, and I can get through everybody in an hour and get this one back to coherence, this one back to wisdom, this one back, because they're used to doing the process with me. But the key is not, I can make it very short to move through the emotion. But the key is, will they trust me? Will they let me hold them? Will they let go? Will they surrender? And will they feel, will they feel at a 10 out of 10? Because remember at the beginning of the interview, what you resist persists. If you feel the fear at an eight out of 10, you just created more fear. (laughs) You just resisted 20% of it and it's going to get bigger. So you've got to be willing. And I'm very, very good about my tender mother energy and my badass, I got you energy. Like I've got these two polarities and I, and I egg them on. I encourage them. I can tell if they're playing half-ass. You do something half-ass, you get a half-ass result. 
So come on, we're going to go to the core center. I got you. I got you. Go to the epicenter of that fear. Feel it. And they're crying on the call or they're upset on the call. And then it's just 10 seconds. And then we go to the next one and it passes. And then within a very short period of time, they're in calmness, peace, and stillness. And then in that state is when I ask the important question about what the challenge was about. From this awareness now, what has shifted or changed about your original problem? And they're like, oh, I could just do this. And I'm like, exactly. But they had no access to that truth, which was in their prefrontal cortex, creative mind, or the whisper of their intuition when they were in the triggered state. In the triggered state, you're using your reptilian brain. You're out to lunch. You just want to kill before you get killed. And there's no access to wisdom whatsoever. So it's magical, Debbie. That sounds so wonderful. And and we're we're getting close to the end, but we can't leave here without talking a little bit about that book with that delicious title, <laughs> Finding the One is BS. Yes. The one is brilliant and beautiful. Uh, just give us a little taste of what that's about. Yeah, well, it's because uh, I've been divorced twice and the only one in common was me. And if I was to take total responsibility, I was seeking the one to be enough, to finally be enough, be safe, right? If, if you choose me, I am worthy. And that led to two marriages that didn't work because I was coming from empty, blaming them or putting responsibility on them to make me happy. But so when we turn it around and we become the one that we have been seeking and we find that inner safety, security, approval, yumminess, wholeness, overflow from the inside out, we choose a partner. We don't need a partner. Our vibration is high and we attract somebody who also does the work. So ironically, by becoming the one to find the one, we attract our ideal partner or awaken the best in the partner that we have. Oh, well, I'm really looking forward to reading this and learning more about that. But we just have time to ask you, how can we find out more about you and your services? Oh, Debbie, thank you. My name is my website, alanapratt.com. And there is an intimacy blind spot assessment there. There's connection to my YouTube channel with over 5 million views. My podcast, Intimate Conversations, just interviewed John Gray yesterday for the second time. Lots of great conversations there and lots of resources for people to listen to and be loved. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for being on Dream Power Radio today. Mm. We've been speaking with relationship expert, Alana Pratt. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Spector Weissman. For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network the world's leading positive programming network, powered by Raven International.